Good afternoon. It is Monday, May the 16th, 2016. I've been at work all day at a mixed day centre for those with a learning disability and the elderly with dementia. I'm tired, have tea, then my wife Ethel and I get in the car and drive 30 miles into Hull for an appointment with the neurologist about my headaches. He tells us he is confused because the x-rays are clear. He then produces this test with camels, dates, clocks, and a picture of two infinity symbols looked together. I'm trying to copy it, but end up with two squares wide apart. I finish the test, he looks at it, and out of the blue he tells me that his, his advice is, I have to stop driving now, and that I have frontal temporal dementia. We'd never thought anything about any, any of that before. We discuss my work, and he tells us to ask our GP for support. That is it. We walk out into an empty waiting room. Luckily, Ethel is with me, or else I'd have had to order a taxi to get home. The next day, Ethel phones the GP and asks what support is available. She comes back with, what support do you want? My work, remember, with, with the elderly, my, the, my manager and everyone else are totally amazed that I have to mention. No one had noticed it in their own staff. Ethel and I discuss the future and decide to return to Scotland. I'm originally from Dundee, and Ethel is an Aberdeenshire lass, with one of her daughters already up here. So a year later, after all the paperwork is done, we move up to Coonan Bay, near Peterhead. The move is done so as to be near our daughter, and Ethel has always wanted to return home. No thought of differences of support, as there was no support in England, so thought there'd be none up here. How wrong we were. After the GP, I was sent to a consultant who instantly offered home support in the form of occupational health advisor and a physio. Most importantly, I was given a long-term use of an outreach worker who visits every two months. I also had a woman come and help me reminisce, all of which helped me to come to terms with my diagnosis. My only bugbear at this time was that it was called the Older People's Service although it has changed its name since. The consultant did not believe the original diagnosis, so after much time and assistance from the NHS, I had been disgui disguised, diagnosed as having posterior cortical atrophy. The service has also set up a younger person dementia group for the North East with Alzheimer's Society's help. This nurse service is due to be living in the Shire. Aberdeen City residents do not get this service, it seems to be part of the postcode lottery. There should not be a lottery when it comes to such services, as they support us, but also must be cost-effective keeping beds from being blocked. Obviously, and maybe not so to most folk, I'm not the only one in the family affected by dementia. My wife, as my main carer, has had her life radically altered, and I know it can be very hard for her. There is some support for her, such as carers' meetings, but getting actual practical support, e.g. financial, to allow her a proper break away from me without worrying is, as far as we can tell, non-existent, which is self-defeating, as again, if she's unable to cope, I end up in more care. Or she does, thus costing a lot more. Because I am vocal, have early symptoms, and show different symptoms to others, the council cannot believe my care requires respite. Much, much more needs to be done in this area especially as the two of us are pretty vocal and still reasonably tech and life savvy. What about others who are not, for instance? For my sins, I used to work in benefits administration, so I understand claim forms. Horror of horrors, I helped to design some. But even I was nearly floored by the forms for working age disability benefits. This shows the important work done by such organisations as the Alzheimer's Society and other link workers. I am heavily involved in research for people with dementia, such as transport issues and the provision of public disabled toilets. The toilet research especially has been fascinating as they're so deplorable. Uh, being sad, I had a look at the one here in the hotel and there's some things that could be better, shall we say. And if you think about it, the reception and most hotel receptions are very bright and shiny, which is pretty confusing to someone like me. Also, many of you will have come through Aberdeen Station to get here. When I last went there, that big sign just merged into one, and I could, there was no way I could find my way to the toilet, or anywhere, actually. There was one negative part of the research. 
research. I had to go to Dundee and back for a meeting within the same day. This event highlighted my limitations as I was floored for a while afterwards. This means that I cannot travel far at all for research or pleasure. For this reason, I'm glad that conferences such as this one are held in Aberdeen. More should come up this way. There is also beautiful scenery and the folk are very welcoming. Seriously, when funding is granted, extra money should be allowed so as to include folk from the northeast and points further north. Life Changes Trust shows the way, others should follow. Skype, etc., is no use to me and others as we lose the ability to concentrate on the screen and talk. This inability to travel is probably my biggest bugbear regarding dementia. As we used to love to travel, I still dream going, about going back to Iceland, the country, not the shop, one last time. <laughs> I still can't decide whether I regret having dementia. What I do not regret is being diagnosed early. If I hadn't been, I would still have the symptoms without any answers. I see the early diagnosis as a blessing in that I can join the growing band of people who can talk about their experiences with dementia. Consultants can diagnose and prescribe, but they cannot understand what it is like to live with dementia 24-7. We are the experts on this. Society thinks of people with dementia as sitting in a corner. Obviously, dementia does not start there. Now better diagnostic tools are available, there will be more and more people who will be able to add their experiences to assist others. Language is important. We are not sufferers. We have dementia, and everyone of us has a different. It is my dementia, and no consultant can tell me what is right to feel or what are the right coping strategies. As I say, ironically, I used to work in a day centre for the elderly, where the staff were strictly encouraged to keep the service users awake as they should receive value for money. However, with my PCA, I get sensory overload easily and need to go into a quiet, dark room. If I was in my old day centre, I would soon show challenging behaviour and then not, eventually not be allowed back. I can imagine this occurs a lot with those who cannot communicate verbally. I am terrified of being misunderstood and staff using a chemical cough instead of trying to work out the reason behind any behaviour. When I was first diagnosed, I took advantage of the early diagnosis and set up all the legal and financial matters and tried to ensure my family have happy memories. But I'm afraid it's not all positive. In the deep, dark soul of the night, I sometimes get depressed in the future, but by morning, I'm ready to be a feisty so-and-so again. I also get foggy days, but during them, I feel nothing. I just exist with a corner of my mind, knowing I'll be back in a sunny day soon. My life has changed due to dementia, but until recently, I did not realize that the Life Changes Trust has also changed my life by financing most of the research that helps keep me busy. If I had stayed in England, I do not believe that the changes would have been so positive, as I can't see myself having been so enabled to speak out. For this, I thank Alzheimer's Scotland and all the other professionals that have been involved with myself. It is Friday the 22nd of March 2019. My wife and I are Aberdeen Royal Infirmary. I'm registered as visually impaired and a consultant walks me down the corridor to a support worker from North East Sanctuary Services. The consultant tells him I'm Terry Pratchett, hence the hat. And two hours later, we come out knowing a lot more about being visually impaired and have tip two, tips too. What a difference from the beginning of my journey. Unfortunately, he said there are only two such support workers in Scotland. I believe that this should be the gold standard for all those with life-changing conditions. Finally, as, you, as you'll have realised, I'm very vocal that we're the experts. So I've started a blog called listen to us.home.blog, which shows my experiences and how I think things should change for the better. I would love others with dementia to, con to contribute. Most of all, I don't want future generations to be able to say they have nothing to show them how to support those with dementia. That's it. Thank you.